Welcome to the first episode of our War Department's series of alumni interviews. I'm Shisa, I'm a third year history and international relations student. Today I'm interviewing Yulia Chukova, um, who completed her MA in Conflict Security and Development in the War Studies Department in 2020 to 2021. Yulia is now a weapon contamination coordinator for the International Committee of the Red Cross Syria program based in Geneva. Yulia is passionate about doing her part to mitigate against the consequences of explosive violence. Being Ukrainian and working in this field is incredibly timely considering the geopolitical atmosphere present. So thank you so much for coming to talk to us today. And Yulia, may I start by just making sure that all, and asking that all your friends and family and colleagues are all right at the minute. Yeah, it's fine. Everyone is alive. I just wanted to uh, update maybe from your latest information. I used to be based in Syria with ICRC, that's true. Uh, but uh, for the last two weeks, I ended my mission there and I'm already in Europe and on my way basically to Ukraine. Um, can you tell us about your career journey and how you got to the point that you're at now? That's, uh, yeah, I think it's uh, similar for many people from the conflict affected countries, I think, uh, because like until 2014, I used to be a children coach and I was working in local NGO and never planned to leave my hometown. Uh, but I'm from Eastern Ukraine, so uh, the war in 2014 didn't get there. Uh, but uh, after the Russian invasion, I was starting to volunteer. I was volunteering in the hospital with injured soldiers, with injured civilians. I was volunteering, uh, collected a lot of uh, aid and equipment for military units at that point. Uh, we did a lot of uh, fundraising and uh, kind of uh, community engagement activities, I would say, now, as I know how to call it. I didn't know it back then. Um, yeah, and uh, in 2016, I joined um, International NGO, uh, Danish Demani Group, and I went to the very eastern Ukraine to conduct uh, uh, explosive ordnance risk education sessions for, for communities there, for civilians in the front line, how to behave safer in the presence of uh, explosive ordnance, which were uh, highly present there, and they are highly present now as well as well. So yeah, and then uh, my career developed uh, from there. Uh, I used to be a trainer, so then I started to lead the project. And then I had a brief uh, experience with the uh, United Nations uh, Development Program in Kiev, uh, working on uh, corruption prevention initiatives. Um, but basically, it was still uh, very much around the training and uh, behavior change. And yeah, and then I went to Afghanistan with my old organization, the Danish Demanding Group. And um, I was leading the Explosive Ordnance Risk Education Project there which was the biggest at that point. And uh, of course, this international experience changed a lot my perspective on things and um, kind of advanced my career in the field, if I can say so. And then uh, I went to Iraq with the uh, United Nations Mine Action Service, um, also still working on explosive ordnance risk education. And then I got the Shining Scholarship. Uh, I took a kind of career gap and uh, um, it's supposed to be a fun year of studies at King's. Um, I think the idea of having a gap year uh, doing masters was not the smartest because it was pretty heavy. And, uh, and it was a very online year because it was a pandemic mm -hmm. year. I didn't have any single uh, in-person class, <clears throat> but I was very lucky because I had the fantastic, um, fantastic classmates really. And uh, we bonded a lot and uh, we tried to study together and did activities together as much as pandemic allowed us. And uh, uh, yeah, and after that, I went to Syria as a weapon contamination coordinator to lead the, their program with ICRC. And uh, of course, after the escalation of war uh, in February, I, I decided to, that my country needs me kind of much more than Syria at that stage. Um, so I ended my mission in the beginning of April, and uh, I'm now managing a couple of volunteering projects uh, while I can, and I'm joining uh, the mining charity uh, in Ukraine um, soon, in less than a month from, from now. So yeah, that's where I am now. <laughs> that's very cool. Thank you. 
So yeah, following up on one of those, um, in a previous interview that you did with King's College, um, you stated that the annexation of Crimea and the outbreak of the conflict in Eastern Ukraine in 2014 had a profound impact on you. And I wanted to ask specifically, how did these influence the direction that you took your career? Yeah, I mean, uh, I completely, it, it changed my life completely. <laughs> Because um, in 2014, so I'm from Dnipro, it's the eastern central Ukraine, if you can say. So uh, from the old front line, it was uh, around 200 kilometers to my hometown. And uh, of course, after invasion uh, in 2014, we were uh, living um, in a constant fear of uh, Russian advance to, to our cities. And I remember just having a grab bag all the time. And the majority of my friends um, and some classmates joined the army and uh, we started to do something to, to help. Um, and uh, when the Ilovaisk uh, tragedy, I would say, happened, when, uh, when the green corridors were shelled uh, and, uh, and there were like massive number of casualties at this stage and the Ukrainian um, and like even Dnipro hospitals, even civilian hospitals were flooded by injured people. So I volunteered to help and uh, like, I think the whole system of my values changed dramatically uh, because everything else I did before stopped being important. And, um, mm. and, uh, and yeah, and the, I'm very happy. I, I was one of the very few, very lucky people who, who managed to, uh, to make the passion and the urge for help a career. And I think this is honestly the only motivation that you have to have while joining the humanitarian field, because that's definitely not the case for everyone. Uh, so yeah, it's, uh, it's changed uh, my life. Um, I, like, I, I, I'm, I'm apart from war and apart from uh, conflict right now, and apart from escalation, I am uh, content with my career. Mm -hmm. And I'm content with my expertise and capacity to help. So I think, uh, yeah, I think it was indeed a profound impact. Yeah. Um, so even at the, around the time that we were planning this interview, a lot changed. And I was wondering, how do you think the invasion of you, of, by Russia into Ukraine, even just this year, um, is going to continue to shape your path? And yeah, I mean, it's, it's early on, I guess, um, but do you think this will have as profound an impact on your career as it did in 2014? I mean, I'm not a, uh, I'm not a fortune teller, <laughs> I can't say for sure, and I'm not a political analyst either. Um, it already did because I, I left Syria and I felt that I can't do um, otherwise. And I'm very happy that uh, ICRC supported me in this, uh, in this move. Um, I think it will because uh, um, my international career, uh, which was like in the recent years, like Afghanistan, Iraq, uh, Syria, uh, is definitely gonna focus on Ukraine for the foreseeable future, because I mean, first of all, the expertise is pretty unique uh, considering the Ukrainian background and knowledge of context and everything. Uh, but also like, I think that's somewhere where I would be needed the most for, mm -hmm. for a long while. And my field is uh, like explosive, it's mine, humanitarian mine action basically, or explosive uh, ordnance risk education. It is something that is continuing to be needed long after the hot phase of invasion is over um, and it's not over yet and we don't know when it's going to be over so um, and like the country is already like dramatically contaminated by explosive ordnance uh, which basically means that um, we will have to have a joint effort to clean the country from them for foreseeable years at minimum so unfortunately it's a, yeah it's a, it's definitely it's definitely a life-changing uh, another turn. Mm. Not the first one, but uh, the big one. Yeah, yeah. Um, could you tell us a bit more about um, how your role was as a weapons contamination coordinator? It's not something that I was personally familiar with beforehand, but it sounds really interesting. So, um, I mean, the career in the humanitarian mine action is um, in principle very, um, I can't say similar, 
but um, but it covers more or less the same basics. Um, so weapon contamination coordinator is the one who is managing the program of uh, of the ICRC specifically, uh, but basically any humanitarian mine action coordinator uh, doing more or less the same. So. Um, Again, when the war ends, and the, even if the war doesn't end, the unexploded ordnance uh, and the remnants of war from, from the conflict are, um, are abundant. And uh, they all cause deaths to civilians. And they all, of course, impede the, the economic development, like uh, farmers could not uh, work on their farm uh, because of explosive remnants of war. Uh, in Syria, it's it's pretty critical situation because people can't live in the, in the places which are like massively contaminated, massively destroyed, but also massively contaminated, and the reconstruction cannot start, uh, and the rebuilding of the of the destroyed houses cannot start without making sure that um, the area is clear from explosive remnants of war. So. Um, this is big part of, of, um, of humanitarian man action is, of course, clearance. Um, as ICRC, we didn't have clearance in the country. But <clears throat> apart from clearance, there are another four pillars, so-called, of man action, uh, which are explosive ordnance risk education, uh, mind victim assistance, stockpile destruction, and advocacy. So we were engaged in, uh, in I would say, two and a half of them, basically. Uh, in explosive ordnance risk education uh, massively. So um, the, the, the main target of explosive ordnance risk education is to, um, to educate uh, people about the risks uh, of explosive hazards to offer them the safest possible behavior in a weapon contaminated settings. And uh, mine victim assistance, um, of course, it's uh, it's pretty self-explanatory when people are suffering, uh, the when people are becoming a victim um, from, of the explosive ordnance, often it is, um, uh, it, it causes uh, it, it cause a disability. And, uh, and, uh, and of course, these people should be assisted, not only um, in terms of prosthetic limbs and physical rehabilitation, but also psychological rehabilitation, economic support, and so on and so forth. So this is something big uh, that, that was also doing. Like in practice uh, in Syria, I had uh, um, local Syrian colleagues who, who were doing a fantastic job in different provinces of, uh, of Syria. <coughs> and, uh, and a big uh, and really, really large team of uh, Syrian Arab Red Crescent volunteers uh, who were doing these risk education activities for the population. So in practice, um, I think humanitarian mine action is not that okay, that's dear to my heart, but it's not that different from uh, any other humanitarian programs. It's a lot of uh, program management. It's a lot of coordination. It's a lot of technical knowledge on uh, social and behavioral change communication. Um, when you develop materials, when you develop approaches, uh, it's a lot about monitoring and evaluation to make sure that your activities are actually making any difference on the ground. Um, which is which is still very important part of uh, humanitarian um, response. Wow, yeah, that's a lot. Thank you. Um, I wanted to ask a couple of questions about your time at King's and your experience with the degree that you did with um, King's College London. So why did you choose to come and study an MA in conflict security and development at King's and especially during the pandemic? And yeah, how did you find that? <clears throat> Well, I didn't know that it's going to be a pandemic year. Yeah, when you're fine. <laughs> to be fair, um, uh, I I thought a lot actually. Would I have like done differently uh, if uh, if I if I had known that it's going to be a pandemic year? And um, on the one hand, uh, yes, I like I wouldn't lie. Uh, having online classes only, it's definitely not the full experience that you can exp that you can have as a student. Yeah, no. Um, so it, it, you kind, it kind of deprives you massively from networking, it kind of deprives you massively from interaction with the professors and, and, uh, and, uh, and your peer, um, peer students. Uh, but at the same time, I was thinking that, uh, because I, I really gave it a lot of thought, and I was thinking like, okay, if I hadn't done it last year, 
I, I, I wouldn't have met my classmates and I think we formed a fantastic uh, group uh, and a fantastic bond. And uh, many of them are now in, uh, in South Sudan, in Iraq, uh, I went to Syria, I came back to Ukraine. So I'm pretty sure I will uh, see them all over and over in the field. <clears throat> so um, I, I think I, I, I'm, I'm very happy that I went in that year Mm -hmm. because uh, I formed this connection and on a both professional but mainly personal level and I think that's very important. Uh, at King's, uh, why conflict security and development? Because I think it was a very obvious choice for me uh, after a humanitarian, um, humanitarian career for a while and uh, as a kind of mature um, uh, MA student, I... Uh, I consulted, I heard about the program, a couple of my colleagues in Iraq actually did it like uh, years before. Uh, so it was definitely recommended and I found it, I found it very useful. I found the structure very like, um, very helpful for me perfect, personally because like I had a lot of uh, practical background but I never managed to um, systematize that academically. Mm -hmm. So um, I know that majority of people do MA and then go to work. Um, that was not the case for me, but also that was not the case for many other my classmates, actually, because we had, uh, I don't know, we had a pretty, um, pretty experienced group. At least half of our uh, group were had one in one way or another had the international or national humanitarian experience or security experience or army experience. So <clears throat> I think the big part of, of the learning journey was um, sharing this experience and sharing outlooks. And uh, what I loved a lot about um, the program specifically, I'm not sure whether it's the same for Kings in general, because you know, I never met uh, many people uh, out of my program at Kings. Uh, but um, I think uh, it, what, what benefited us a lot, it's uh, uh, internet the, the level of internationality of the program yeah. so we had people from uh, Uzbekistan Afghanistan India Ukraine America um, we had a lot of people from all over the Europe so and the <clears throat> I think this is something that gives you uh, that basically is the big part of learning uh, because uh, like the, there are different perspectives on things and uh, when you discuss specific conflicts uh, it's um, it's very valuable to have an uh, insight from someone from the conflict from someone involved whose country is involved in the conflict yeah. from someone who is involved as a soldier or someone who is involved as a humanitarian practitioner which is practically opposite of the soldier mm. so um, it is uh, it is uh, it was very, like, it was very enriching. Um, can, could, could it be done better, of course, because uh, online year is, is online year, and there were a lot of problems related to that. But um, at the same time, like, I think, uh, uh, I think the program itself is something that I really enjoyed. And uh, I enjoyed that uh, the selection of uh, optional modules were, was, like, very interesting for me. And I was very lucky to get uh, basically all that I wanted uh, modules, and uh, and and it was very interesting to 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 discover for myself like another part like security and counterterrorism studies, which I never knew anything about. And mm -hmm. now I think that's um, that's 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 very important and very valuable uh, knowledge for my future career. That's really interesting to hear, especially, yeah, having classmates that are like on either front of a conflict um, and from different countries. I think it's incredibly valuable to have people who are actually um, somewhat personally involved in them. Um, and it's also very encouraging to hear about how close you became with your classmates despite being online um, and the connections that you made. Um, thank you so much for coming to speak to us about this. Um, I was incredibly yeah, insightful and like knowledgeable. Um, yeah, and I'm so glad that I could be the one to interview you today. So yeah, thank you so much. It's a big pleasure to be interviewed by you and good luck on your third year. Of, uh... Thank you. Yeah, I'm nearly done. <laughs>